Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Dolan. I would like to welcome you to these intermediate experiments. Today we're going to explore capacitors, specifically how to measure leakage. We'll start with a working definition of capacitor leakage. That's electrical, not physical, leakage. We'll look at the data sheet to see how a typical capacitor is rated and then we'll perform the actual experiment to measure the leakage. This is the setup for that experiment we'll be doing. It consists of the test capacitor and a resistor. You can then use an oscilloscope or a high impedance voltmeter to perform the measurement. Basically, you're going to look at the voltage drop across this resistor and then use Ohm's law to determine what the leakage current is. As you'll see in a moment, I'll be using the Digilent Analog Discovery as an oscilloscope. Here's the schematic. At its core, it's nothing more than a capacitor and a resistor. We're going to connect a voltmeter here. And we're also going to use a switch here. In a moment, you'll see that I'm going to apply 16 volts DC to this capacitor, which by the way is a 16 volt, 3300 microfarad capacitor. We're going to close the switch and wait a couple of minutes. That will allow the capacitor to charge and it'll also aid a bit in forming if that particular capacitor hasn't been used in some time. When we're ready, we'll open the switch and then we'll look at the voltage. Using Ohm's law, we can then determine the current or the leakage current, which is to say that undesirable current which is flowing through the capacitor and through the resistor after the capacitor was initially charged. That equation for Ohm's law depends on the value of this resistor. For example, if we let this be 10K ohms, we can define the leakage of the capacitor is equal to the voltage, that's the voltage measured here, divided by that resistor. Again, multiple steps. We charge the capacitor by closing this switch. We'll call this switch one. The next step, open, open the switch. We'll want to wait a few minutes for that current to stabilize. And then we measure. This is the data sheet for the capacitor we'll be using in this experiment. It's an older YXA series by Rubicon. And if we come down here, we can see the leakage current is specified as 0.01 CV, where C is the capacitance and V is the voltage. So the I max leakage is equal to 0.01 CV, which in this case is 3,300 microfarads by a working voltage of 16, which yields a leakage current of about 530 microamps. You'll notice that there is a stipulation that this occurs a couple of minutes after applying the rated voltage to the capacitor. At any rate, just remember this number, 530 microamps. Here's our test setup. This is the capacitor under test, and this is the series resistor, in this case 10K ohm, and we're using the analog discovery as an oscilloscope. Off screen is a power supply which is set to 16 volts. Before we go any further, I should mention something about this Digilent Analog Discovery, and that is this line right here. The oscilloscope function has two channels that will handle plus or minus 25 volts input. In the experiment we're about to do, I'm only using 16 volts, so we're well within the capabilities of this instrument. However, if you use a higher voltage, you have to be careful because a mistake could cost you the test equipment. 
Also, watch out for yourself, because if you start playing around with voltages higher than 25 volts, you run the risk of electrocution. If you're new to electronics, you'll definitely want to find a mentor to help guide and instruct you on topics of safety. The first step is to install a jumper. We'll be using that as our switch that we showed in the schematic earlier. At this point, we'll wait a few minutes. That allows the capacitor to charge. And it's also a rather brutal way of reforming an electrolytic capacitor. I'll go ahead and speed things up so we don't have to wait two minutes. When we've waited long enough, we will start the oscilloscope and we'll pull the jumper at the same time. This is a typical response. You can see that the voltage is starting to come up. And we'll wait a couple minutes to see how far it does indeed increase. I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. So here we are two and a half minutes later. We're at 56 millivolts into 10K, which gives us approximately six microamps, which is considerably better than the 530 microamps, which was considered maximum for this particular capacitor. At this moment in time, that capacitor is fully charged. So I'm going to install a resistor into the breadboard and then discharge the cap through that resistor. And now I'm going to install the switch and the other capacitor. Here's something interesting. If I remove the switch, watch how quick that leakage current increases. You can see it's off the scale. This capacitor is quite old. It's been sitting in my toolbox for probably a decade and a half. Let's see if it gets any better. Again, off the chart. We'll wait a minute. This is that reforming in action I mentioned earlier. Let's adjust the oscilloscope to see just how high that is. Okay, it looks like the voltage is somewhere around 1.8 volts. Let's let it reform a bit more. It's been over seven minutes at this point. I'm gonna pull the jumper and we'll just see where it falls. Looks like we're approaching 1.4 volts. So 1.4 divided by 10,000 gives us 140 microamps, which is still less than that 530 I mentioned earlier. However, it's nowhere near as good as the other capacitor. Let's give it one last chance with another five minutes. It looks like we've had some improvement. Last time it was 140 microamps, and now it's about 110 microamps. It would probably get better if we waited longer, but I'm out of time, and this is about as exciting as watching grass grow. So, let's depart with a look forward. You may have noticed that I have not maintained a consistent voltage across the capacitor because as the capacitor leakage increased, the voltage here subtracted from the total voltage on the capacitor, which means my leakage measurements were always a bit off. So that is certainly a next step, is how do you maintain a consistent voltage across the capacitor? I suspect this would be a good application for op amps. Another thing that might be good to do is to automate this process. So instead of waiting forever as I did watching the oscilloscope, you might be able to insert a capacitor, 
hit a go button and have the microcontroller take care of it for you. Best wishes to you. Please leave any comments, questions, or concerns in the space below.